I had never really looked at my father's feet before. But on that night in August when he went into hospice, I sat with him on his bed for hours waiting for an ambulance. Every time he would shift on the bed, he'd stick his legs out from under the blanket. I spent a lot of time looking at his feet that night. The high arches, the curve of his heel, the long toes. They looked so familiar. And then I realized why. I had been putting shoes on identical feet my whole life. We had the same feet. That night, that seemed very important. And it still does. He died five days later after a two-year battle with brain cancer. And it was a battle. Four surgeries, a shunt to relieve pressure in his brain, two rounds of radiation, chemotherapy, and a host of other pills and procedures. He never regained consciousness. Physically, we lost my dad piece by piece. But on that last day before he went into hospice, his laugh and his smile, his eyes, his hug, his love of building things, all of those things, his smell, were still very present. And then, in what felt like an instant, but was really five days, they were gone. It's been two months, and there's still a hole in the middle of my stomach as I walk around. If there's a remedy for this, I don't know what it is. When we lose someone to death, it can be particularly difficult for us as Unitarian Universalists because we belong to a faith tradition that offers no clear answers about what happens after. And my family is Catholic, and so for my mother and my brother, the promises of reunion and everlasting life offered by the priest at his funeral are true. I find I am not so easily comforted. I don't know if I will ever see my father again, and the finality of that is as immense to me as the size of the universe. Unitarian Universalists do not have a singular concept of God, nor even a definitive answer regarding God's nature or existence. But if there is one thing that we hold necessary and vital to human flourishing, it is works and acts of love. To quote my favorite author, J.R.R. Tolkien, love is now mingled with grief. When we risk loving, we risk grief. We cannot have one without opening ourselves up to the other. Grief is the wage of love. And we the living know that grief can only be endured. Grief is far from simple and no one can tell you what it will look like or how long it will take. No one can tell you what it will look like on the other side either. Even though I begin to suspect that my grief will never completely dissolve, I have faith that I will not be forever bound in the act of grieving. Now the line I quoted earlier was not complete. Here is the full thought as originally written. Though in all lands, love is now mingled with grief, it grows perhaps the greater. And so maybe love can be a balm for grief. My grief and loss are my own, but I am not on my own. We are all connected and Unitarian Universalists take this as an article of faith. And we are connected by suffering as well as by joy. In this grieving time, the lines of one of my favorite songs written by Isai Barnwell keeps running through my head. 
Those who have died have never, never left. The dead have a pact with the living. They are in the woman's breast. They are in the wailing child. They are with us in our homes. They are with us in this crowd. The dead have a pact with the living. This is the only immortality that I can be certain of. The way we go on. The way we remember. My father is dead, but I am not. I can still see his eyes and his smile every time I look in the mirror. I can't feel his hug and his scent has faded, but I can remember him and remember how much of my being has been shaped by his love and example. I can be a daughter. I can be a legacy.